This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Don't let your kids watch it! Hey there, Artie! Oh, no new tips. I thought it was going to be, you unlock the tip, how to save Satogo. But that would probably, that would be the visual novel equivalent of a super guide. I walked forward quite a ways, then turned right where the rice fields ended. I'd never come here before, so I had no idea where to go. I got lost several times, so I may have taken quite a long way around. Maybe I should have gone back home and gotten my bike first. It would have made everyone else worry if I had asked them. So I asked one of our other classmates where Satoko's actual house was. Japan is very hot. Uh, is it hotter than, like, the United States? I don't know. You have to understand, folks, my, like, worst subject in school back then and still to this day is anything relating to geography or navigation. So, I don't know geologically where Japan is with regards to the equator or, like, <laughs> the North and South Pole, but if it gets hot, that is... If it gets, like, super hot, that is news to me. I would believe it if it got hotter than Michigan, but I would not believe if it got hotter than Texas. I asked one of our classmates where Satoko's actual house was. That house was originally her family's, apparently, not their uncle and his wife's. Their house had been bigger, so they had taken it for themselves. Right here. Several houses all in a line. Over there. I was visiting Satoko's house, but didn't particularly intend to meet her there. I didn't mean to spy on the enemy, her mean Uncle Ivor. Maybe I just wanted to be a little closer to her, as her nini. Pretty words, but I didn't know if they were true. It was 94 when you went last not month? Okay, that's, yeah, that's pretty hot. What if Tomita Ku Oh, last month? That in September. Oh, okay. So maybe... Okay, maybe it's warmer than I thought there. I thought it was just kind of like... Not generic weather, but like fairly consistent weather year-round. Or like it got really cold in winter, and then was like just kind of okay in summer. If what Tomita Ku and the others had told me was right, it would be this house? When I recognized it, my feet grew heavy. What did I come here for? My motive for coming here was absurd. When Mion had said at the end that we were powerless, it made me sort of frustrated. I just wanted to do something, anything other than waste the days away praying for a miracle. That's what made me come here. But that was all. Even if I, I were to witness her uncle actually tormenting Satoko, what could I do? Would I act like a comic book hero, punch the guy in the face and take Satoko away from me? And then live together somewhere far away? That was ridiculous. The cicada's voices raised in chorus sounded like they were scoffing at me. As though I were saying, as if they were saying that if I couldn't do anything and wouldn't do anything, then I should go back home. I heard a car approaching, so I got out of its way. But the car stopped right behind me, its horn honking shortly once. Annoyed, hadn't I gotten out of their way? I looked behind me, and a familiar face was looking at me out of the driver's seat window. Uh -oh. oh no, coach is creeping on Satoko. <laughs> at least it's not the police officer who hurt me. Where... <laughs> Wait, why am I? Wait, why am I happy to see Coach? No, Co Coach is bad, 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 bad. We don't want Coach, <laughs> but he's 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 less bad than certain other characters this timeline. Mm. Compared to Japan to Florida in terms of weather, that is shocking to me. Me being here wasn't normal. Just as I considered somehow giving him the slip, I noticed Satoko sitting in the passenger seat. Wait, what? Satoko. No! Oh, empty eyes again. Satoko got out of the car and began unloading a lot of groceries from the trunk. Hmm, what a coincidence! As Coach spoke, he pulled Satoko's bike out from the back seat where they'd put it. The grocery bags were big, and there were four of them. They all seem to be packed full and very heavy. 
セブンスマートおいおい自転車で行くにはちょっと遠すぎないか It's probably preferable to being at home. I looked at the bags and saw they were filled to the brim with sake bottles. Snacks that you'd eat with sake and boxes of cigarettes. Oh, wow, man. I, man, he just freaking. Uncle just sounds like a real winner. Just, it's everything is a red flag. Their weight was one thing, but their contents were nothing less than luxury items. <laughs> So Toko gave Coach a smile filled with gratitude. But it was incredibly awkward and even heartrending. <laughs> We're having cigarettes for dinner. It's delicious. What kind of a kid hates snacks? Well, I, f I have a feeling that if her life continues this way, she might start to smoke and drink. He. He made Satoko go to a distant store by herself on her bike so she could buy dumb shit like this. What was the uncle doing right now, anyway? He must have been working up a good sweat at this very moment if he needed to send Satoko out by herself, right? If not, then how much. How much had Satoko suffered for no reason? I hadn't intended to voice my feelings, but they may have made it into my face. Coach might have noticed because he clapped me on the shoulder. Just then, one of the house windows clattered open, and the face of a vulgar man, the very sight of which made me immediately avert my eyes, emerged from within it. There were no self-introductions necessary. My gut told me that this was the uncle in question. Do we get a sprite? The first thing out of his mouth should have been words of gratitude for Satoko. Satoko! Oh, it's Tepe, that is his name. Great. Satoko miserably apologized over and over, bowing again and again. She could be perfectly described as a small animal. I had no idea what was happening. Satoko finished shopping for all this heavy stuff that wasn't even for dinner. She only managed to come back because she ran into Coach and he drove her home. If she hadn't been found by him, she'd surely still be by herself, panting and moaning, pedaling her bicycle up that steep hill. What was with those words, those horrible sleazy words for what he said to Satoko? In what country's dictionary did it tell him to say such things? To a young girl who just finished shopping! My anger, of course, wouldn't reach him. The uncle displayed no interest in me, instead shouting at Coach. Oh, yeah. Why is everyone calling him doctor? Is he actually a doctor? Great! Just trying to butter him up in a sleazy way. Mm -hmm. そんな。is this guy like a professional gambler? Is that what he does? <laughs> this guy sounds terrible. I didn't even understand what her uncle and coach were talking about. Maybe he's a bookie. But I knew one thing for sure. None of what he just said had been to thank Satoko in any way. This guy, this guy doesn't eat. He just consumes alcohol for his sustenance. He's one of these people. What the heck? There's a thug living with her? This is terrible. He's even worse than man. Actually, never mind. Maybe thug is an upstanding guy. Okay, wow, they do a great job of introducing him as just exactly the kind of scumbag you'd expect. Oh, what the heck is Subaki doing here? It looked like it was, wasn't just her uncle, some of his friends were over. Hey, wait. What was he... No, what were they doing? Fleeing rude words left and right, making Satoko go shopping for your beer? What were they doing? 
おじさまのお友達が来てて、マーザンやってますの。マジョーネ。お友達のお夕食もご用意するように言われてますのよ。な、なんだよ、それ。マジョーネ He called his friends over for m a j o n They were too busy playing, so they sent Satoko to buy them a crap load of booze from a faraway store. And the first thing he said to her was how she left the gas on? What the hell? 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 I don't think you could take Uncle on, let alone Uncle plus like three thugs. Even though Coach was listening, he pretended he wasn't. There was a line of heavy looking shopping bags lined up on the ground next to the trunk. So, my brother, I'm going to take a look at you. 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 There's probably not a lot Coach can do. Coach pretended he hadn't heard that violent outburst either. When I thought about it later, his reaction might have been the best thing he could do in that situation. Don't stoke the fires, essentially. The bags were packed to the brim with bottles of sake and bar snacks. They were so heavy. And so filthy. So unfair. They weren't just heavy in terms of weight. They made me feel mortified. Nothing could have been heavier than that. Satoko mistook my biting back the humiliation as grimacing under the weight and offered to help. Satoko had never looked down on my physical strength in the slightest. <laughs> no, not at all, answered Coach, smiling vaguely, coolly. But I, and I alone, knew. Coach was an adult, so he was just knew how to keep his feelings from showing. There was even more anger than I was feeling, burning deep in his eyes. Yeah. <laughs> Would have been funny if he, there was literal fire in his eyes. <laughs> uh, uh, shit, shit. It wasn't very far to get to the doorstep of Satogo's house, but the bag squeezed my palms and started leaving red marks. <laughs> Fury welled up in me, and the back of my throat stunned. But even if it all came gushing out, it wouldn't solve anything. So, just tightly gritting my teeth was as much as I could do. After we carried them to the back door, Satoko said that was enough. Occasionally, we'd hear the repulsive laughing of her uncle and her friends inside. And my insides would seethe. I knew they weren't ridiculing us. And that was why it made me so mad. They'd made Satoko shop for all this heavy, selfish stuff and then ignored her and laughed amongst themselves as they pleased. It was deeply aggravating. Of course, Coach had to have felt the same way. But if he accidentally let his feelings slip onto his face, he'd only cause Satoko more worry. He knew all that and spoke coolly, as if to say he didn't care. Yeah. <laughs> That he feels that way. Those words were sad. Satoko herself was sad and resigned that we could only help her so much. But she was right. No matter how much coach or I want to help Satoko, this was as much as we could do. I felt absolutely ashamed at not having the power to help her any more than this. Burning, boiling emotions were bubbling up within me and rising into my throat. Trembling all over, I almost started to cry from my fury. I wanted to, at least. Give her those trite words saying that I'd help her whenever she wanted. Satoko seemed to have guessed what was I doing in a what I was doing in a place like this. When my house was in the opposite direction from school. 
さあもう行った方がよろしいですわ今は酔っ払ってますからどんな難癖をつけられるかわかりませんわよ the fact that she is this casual about it is really disturbing she felt guilty getting us involved after we'd helped her because she wanted to be the only one to suffer this misfortune that's how it looked and it hurt I handed my supermarket bag over to Satoko and then I noticed the back of Satoko's hand there was something that looked like a bruise Oi, Satoko, この朝どうしたんだよ I knew as much as anyone else how transparent that sounded. I didn't need to hear it from Satoko to know how this bruise came to be. I Coach nudged me in the back. And then he put his index finger to his mouth to chide me for being so loud. そんな話してないだろうその手のあざはどうしたって聞いてるんだよ<笑> The evening glow finally got to a point where I could see the other concealed oval shaped bruises and traces of swelling on her neck and her legs and other places too How did you see it on her legs? She wears, she's wearing tights 階段から落ちたんですの<笑> That is one of the most disturbing laughs I've heard. But for a very different reason than the other disturbing laughs, the very moment my violent rampaging emotions were about to burst their way out of my throat, I found my mouth being clamp tightly clamped down on. Oh boy. Coach was pressing down on my mouth from behind, wrapping me around tightly with his hands. Because of that, I couldn't say anything. I could only groan. Which I did. That was all I could do. I needed to expel all the magma sitting deep within me. Because otherwise I'd surely explode into a million pieces at that very moment. So I groaned. I groaned from my mouth, from my whole body, while heat fell in drops from my eyes. I groaned and groaned. I groaned to the point of exhaustion. <laughs> run absolutely everything out of myself. Even having lost my voice, I was still wringing it all out. Endure it for now? And then what, huh? What would happen to her? To Satoko? Her body and mind were wounded, and she was being made to suffer like this. Can you not even, even let me howl in vain at it? Is that it, coach? Are we this powerless, so powerless that we can't even fucking scream from the bottom of our hearts? The voices of the Higarashi made me calm down. I didn't know how long it had been. Satoko abruptly gave a slight bow. Satoko. <laughs> ケイチさんが本当のニーニーみたいに見えました。私の本当のニーニーはいなくなってしまったけど、私にはケイチさんというニーニーがいてくれる。そうだ。俺がお前のニーニーだ。お前が辛い時、絶対に助けてやるから。
Tears trickled down from Satoko's eyes. And then she narrowed her eyes into a smile. Sayonara. Nini. Satoko took her right hand and awkwardly waved to me. She is a tough cookie. There was no way that I could say bye, see you tomorrow. And then, from inside the house, came a throaty, disgusting voice. さ、ニーニー。早く行ってくださいませ。もう私は大丈夫ですから。早く。行きましょう。前原さん。これ以上は帰って佐都子ちゃんに迷惑をかけます。監督、ニーニーのお家はちょっと遠いんですの。申し
He was in a position to protect her far, far better than we ever could. That was the cold, sad truth of the massive gulf between Satoshi and us. Satoshi left home. I didn't know why. Maybe it was because of Oyashiro-sama's curse, or he disappeared or something. In any case, he wasn't beside Satoko now. At that time, Satoko needed him to protect her most. He wasn't there. When the world needed him most, he vanished. Maybe he's dead. おやしろ様の祟りがどうとかいろいろ言われてますが、家でしたとしか言えません。ある日を境に帰ってこらえて仲間が言ってました。妹の里子に書き置き一つ残さずに家出を。里子君はコツコツとアルバイトをしてたん
Satoshi running away and his disappearance, that would obviously mean people thought it was a curse, right? And they could smile, as though it were his own fault, as though he got what he deserved. Hey, Oyashira-sama, whoever you are. Satoshi didn't vanish because he ran away. You demoned him away with your curse, didn't you? If that's not what happened, then I won't forgive you. Satoshi wa itsugoro nigedashita ndesu ka? Kyonen no watanagashi no omatsuri no yoru. Oh, he definitely disappeared. Oba ga ijou sha ni korosare te. Sono suujitsu mo no Satoko chan no tanjoubi ni desu. Her birthday is a few days after Watanagashi. Satoko no tanjoubi ni? Do we know that before? I don't remember. <laughs> That's not what a Bane sounds like. I slammed my hands on the dashboard in front of me with all my might. You're gonna trigger the airbag. Satoshi. Of all the days. He could have chosen to run away. Their aunt just died a few days before, didn't she? All your days of suffering were about to end, weren't they? How do you know that? You were just about to start thinking about a new life, weren't you? It's wrong to be happy about someone dying, but for Satoko and her brother, her birthday had come at a critical turning point. Their mean uncle had fled town, and the siblings would be left alone. They should have been able to be happy about that on Satoko's birthday. Satoko was probably waiting for her brother to return the whole time. Waiting for her brother to return, when he never did. Waiting with bated breath for her brother to return. Her hopes and dreams of a new life cut to come growing even larger. But no matter how long she waited, he didn't come back. He didn't even contact her. Satoko trembling in anticipation of a great present. Just when... When would she have to face the cold, terrible truth? Satoshi, you fucking idiot! I could feel my blood rising to my head in my anger at Satoshi. I was frustrated. I was aggravated. I couldn't forgive him. Satoko still respected and adored her brother. And yet he so heartlessly betrayed her. Such a person wouldn't just come back, now when he was most needed. Yes, no one would protect her. Not even her real brother, Satoshi. だから、あなたがニーニーだと認めてもらえて嬉しかったです。え、私もサトコちゃんの幸せを祈る一人ですが、社会的立場があり、日中は仕事をしている身です。私がサトコちゃんのために咲いてあげられる時間は少ない。でもあなたは違います。学校で生活を共にし、サトコちゃんやサトシ君とも年はほとんど離れていない。あなたは自分ができることに限りがあると思っていますが、それでも私よりはずっとサトコちゃんに手を差し伸べられる場所にいるのです
If I had to say, it was more like he wanted to explain, but couldn't put it into the right words. Sadoko-chan was probably thinking of the fact that she was able to do such a thing. Oh, that's messed up. Shiren? There's a strange religious advice. I don't know if you know, but Sadoko-chan has been looking for Sadoko-chan. We literally just talked about that. What do you mean, you might know this? Sadoko-chan has been looking for Sadoko-chan. You literally just told us this. You literally just told us this. I'd known for a while that Satoshi had always protected Satoko from their aunt and uncle. But that was his duty as an older brother, not something to worry about. As for Satoko, the current situation was a retelling of the story of a little over a year ago. But this time, Satoshi wasn't here.誰にも頼らずに自分の力だけで試練を乗り越えたい。そういう力を身につけなければ、サトシ君は帰ってこない。そういう考えになっている。と私は考えます。Now なんて話をしてました。聞いてますよね。昨年も福祉士さんがサトコちゃんのところに行ってるのは。はい。結局様子見で余計にいじめられたって話も。うん。あれ、サトコちゃんが自分で通報したらしいんです。でその結果、余計
Coach turned to me and gazed fixedly into my eyes. It was written all over his face. He was shocked at what such a young kid had said. Coach, no, rather, normal adults might not have understood. So I taught him the creed of, and the values that I believed in. Well, you're not. But... I stared at him with a will strong and unbreakable as steel as his eyes betrayed a tiny bit of unrest. We were silent for a little while, until finally Coach said only that. By the way, Coach is like, by the way, I don't know where you live, and you haven't told me, <laughs> so we've just been driving in circles. <laughs> yeah, you guys made, you made this really huge deal about like that we have to promise to never make her cry. <laughs> we made a vow on that day of the barbecue. I didn't think about it hard at all, but Coach and I still made a promise that we would never let Satoko cry. Coach gave a dry grin of regret, immediately apologizing for not remembering. One day or another, one way or another, when he grinned like that, it made me think that his enthusiasm for saving Satoko was a tiny bit smaller than mine. He lightly hit the brakes, making a skidding noise, and my whole body suddenly fell forward. <laughs> that is ex- How? As somebody who is utterly stupid when it comes to driving and navigations and routing, how the heck did this guy just drive randomly without actually knowing who the house was and happen to end up at the house? That does not make any sense. Oh, Unless he just knew ahead of time. Okay, maybe he already knew. <laughs> Before I knew it, we were almost in my house. KG, who the heck is this weird guy dropping off? That's Coach. He's a creeper, but he's kind of cool. What? <laughs> don't ask Mom. You don't need to know. New tips unlocked. Case file 31. Oh, boy! Plain to see met someone's relative. Ugh. I hate these achievements. Let's go to case 31. December 1st, 1981. Prefecture Juvenile Welfare Division Report. Do not view, do not duplicate. Case 31, November 20th. Satoko Hojo, redacted years old. Residence, Hinamizawa Village, Shishibone. Cut 1. Consultation Circumstances. Anonymous Telephone SOS of Child Abuse. 2. Abuse Situation. Anonymous claims that a female child is suffering physical abuse by adoptive parents, her guardians. 3. Family Structure. Circle marks abusers. Adoptive father, adoptive mother. Older brother, child in question. Note. In June 1980, the child's parents died in an accident, and she was given to her uncle on her father's side, her father's younger brother. 4. Child Consultation Center's Response. On the day of the anonymous telephone consultation, the uh, center called the child's school and asked of her situation. The next day, the welfare officer on duty visited the child's home and heard what they had to say. Both adoptive parents agreed to the center's coaching. Contacted Anti-Abuse Network in the city. As part of this suggested coaching, a district welfare officer in the area began visiting for coaching at fixed intervals. The scrawled note below is stapled to the report. Related information from former officer Mr. W. Official, sorry. Refer to the 1977 document D2-3, number 44. Ask Chief Investigator F from the city's education consultation offices. He is well informed about it. Mr. F. Looks like we're going to have to find him out. Okay. So, if anybody has played this or is familiar with this, uh, how much more of the route do we have in terms of times? Because I think we have to end the stream here. Because it is getting kind of late. But I'm curious to know if I'll be able to finish this in two more streams. Because I'm playing... Because at this point... There's only one more Sunday left in the month, so I was going to stream, obviously, on next Sunday, and I was also going to stream on Halloween to finish this. How many more hours of the route do you guys think is left? Or if people actually know and have played, how many hours do you think is left? 
Because I might have to plan of like, oh, I'm going to have to plan additional streams before then if I want to finish it before October is over. Because I because Halloween is on a work night, I really don't want to stay up till 3 a.m. and have to work the next day. I don't know. Maybe I'll look up just spoiler-free how much time it takes to beat it and like up the estimate a bit because I have to read these out loud physically instead of in my head. We might be heading towards the festival, which is usually the middle of the game. But the thing is, like, all of the, the interesting stuff is happening now before the festival, so... Okay, I'll look it up. We also have to finish Sacred Stone. We'll finish Sacred Stones this week regardless, so maybe I'll also replace the weekday streams with... I don't know, I'll have to figure something out, but... That's gonna do it for tonight. Thanks for joining in, everybody. We'll finish Sacred Stones Wednesday and Friday of this week, and we will be continuing this on Sunday, and I'll have to figure out when we can finish this. So, have a great rest of your night, and God bless, everybody.